I still remember that night. It was July 11, 1979. I was six years old, was lying on the open terrace on top of my house in New Delhi. My eyes wide open looking at the clear sky, stars sparkling, looking out for the streaming line of fire. Skylab, the manned space station, had to be dismantled and was falling into the earth. I was both afraid and hopeful that it would fall near my house so I can see it. It never did. I vowed to come to the United States of America and build a spaceship like the ones you see in Star Trek. I never became a rocket scientist, but I got into movie making instead, where it's much easier to be a rocket scientist, thanks to Jerry Bruckheimer. I finally arrived in America a few years ago. One of the things that always intrigued me about the United States is that being the largest democracy in the world, it had only two parties, the Democrats and the Republicans. Now, I was from India where we had a party for every flavor of ice cream you can buy at Baskin Robbins. Not that that was better, but why only two? Are there only two points of view in the world? It would continue to rack my brain for the longest time until I met Dan Byington, a talk radio show host and businessman, uh, has a major announcement. First of all, welcome to Nothing But Truth. Dan, it's a real pleasure to have you in. Thank you, Crane. Thank you for having me. It's, it's a pleasure. Actually, this is the first time this has been announced on WGNU's Airwaves. I host a show here, and this is the first time that this is coming out on the air on WGNU. I am running for Congress. Okay, we'll review the declaration form and we can make changes, reprint, so, and if everything's correct, then we'll get, get your signature. I need you swearing that everything is true and correct to the best your knowledge. Hello, I'm Mike Seeger. I'm running for Congress, U.S. House, 3rd District. Uh, my name is Michael Bram. I'm uh, running against Dick Gephardt in Democratic primary. Byington kickoff for Congress District 3 barbecue. <laughs> Welcome volunteers, free food. You gotta get the people in the house to hear the message and the only way sometimes you can do that is free food. I just made all these. I'm gonna put this one like probably in my front yard and then see where it says glad you could stop by, glad you could stop Byington. Yeah. Uh, Stout Byington. Yeah. That's going to be like in the back, so when they walk out of the backyard, they'll see this sign, and then when they walk in the backyard, they'll see Byington. The government is simply a stereotype-controlled anarchy, and if you have a bunch of mafia running these organizations like the United States of America, just to put their hand in your wallet, take out your money, and spend it for somebody else. If a libertarian platform, a lot of these people wouldn't be going to jail. Well, no, we wouldn't be prosecuting any of this, this minor petty drug stuff and stuff like that. I've changed my opinion on the whole drug thing over the years. I've come to the conclusion that they should just go ahead and legalize drugs, and I'm a, and I'm a conservative. I don't do drugs. I don't want to do drugs. But I'll tell you what, if they legalize the drugs, it would eliminate most of the crime. 
What I'm saying is the type one and two is completely stupid to be legal. I mean, to be illegal because it's a plant for right. God's sakes. It's like it's like beer, really. So what are you gonna do for Dan to ensure he wins? Well, I guess what I'll do is I'll try to get the word out, and uh, you know, anybody who goes against Gephardt is uh, definitely got my vote, and I'm sure a lot of other people's. I want him to. For one thing, get out of other people's business as much as possible. Stop taxing us to death. And the third thing is do something about all the jobs that are going south of the border. I'd ask Gebhardt flat to his face, what have you done to stop the jobs from leaving this country? Well, the question is to ask Gebhardt what's he doing to stop the flow of jobs from this country to, him, to the next country. You know, he, he voted for NAFTA, didn't he? Didn't he vote for GAF? How can these people out here in these factories, Chrysler and Ford, say, hey, he's our boy? He says he's a machine, you know, and the machine is running. So you have to get, either have your own machine to run against it or somehow throw a monkey wrench into his machine. I think maybe he ought to have a bake sale next week. Well, I thought we could uh, maybe get Dan to base jump off the Eads Bridge with a speedo that says vote Vi Byington on the back, you know, and getting you to film it, and then we release that to the media, you know, something that gets free public publicity. Thank you all for coming to my, to the volunteer okay. barbecue for my campaign. I've made my announcement publicly uh, this past Thursday for the first time, actually, you know, about two weeks ago, but uh, en enjoy the food and everything. The reason why I'm wearing this hat is because I'm working hard for myself and I think you all should work hard for yourself as, as well. I'm not going to relate to my neighbor as a competitor for some type of government handout, grant, or program. Anyway, a couple of my neighbors stopped by. But I have <laughs> I, I have this sheet here. If you want, write your name, write your name, phone number, email address, or your address if you'd like to volunteer my campaign anyway. So um, just continue eating. If you want to ask me any questions or anything, I'll be around. I have a question, sir. Uh, who's your girlfriend? Where? And what are your intentions? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, my intentions on what? <laughs> I've been asked to assist Dan with his uh, campaign in a uh, management form. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that or not. I wanted to come out and meet some of his friends. And so uh, throughout meeting some of them today, I've... Uh, not quite certain I want the job. What will it take for Dan to win this war or this fight against big politicians? About two and a half million dollars. Well, it's, uh, I'm very ticked about dogs and the dead people voting. That's a main issue. This is Mike Steger, another hopeful, unfunded, running in the Republican primaries against party-endorsed Ms. Catherine Enns. He is a one-man campaign crew. They're not doing anything about it. It's crooked, okay? And it's fixed. So all, I say all we got to do is merge the voter database in the city and the county with the driver's license. Put a V on the driver's license. If, if you're a non-driver, you get the non-driver's card fixed, okay? And then... I'm going to do something that Thomas Jefferson would do if he was around today. I'm going to return control of the government to the public. Okay, pretty monumental task, very worthy task. Okay, it sounds like a challenge to me. So I don't even want to go to Washington. I'll do two-way teleconference secure. Okay, I don't really need to go out there. I've been to Washington before. Now before Mike can talk about going to Washington, he had to beat Miss Enns in the primaries who was party endorsed and was relatively well funded. Oh, that's becoming a breeze now. I've got 23 years experience in federal government. Mr. Gephardt. Why am I running against the incumbent Rich Gephardt? Because I can do a better job. I've got 23 years of federal government experience. For Mike, this was personal. Some time ago, he had caught some people falsifying documents and he complained to Dick Gephardt. And he answered me like he'd answer anybody in the district. He said it's an administrative matter. He told me I was on my own, okay? He said, you've exhausted your administrative options. To which I say, no, I haven't. Get part, you're fired.
It seemed to me that Mike Steger was planning too far ahead. Mike Bram, on the other hand, was gunning for Dick Gephardt in the Democratic primary. To me, it seemed like an uphill battle. But then, what do I know? For about 20 years, so it's time for the uh, individuals to stand up and try to get our country back. Country, the country right now is like Rome. The reason a lot of people don't know why Rome collapsed, it was financial. The idea of represent is to represent the beliefs and the backgrounds of the people of your area. Not go around the nation raising money and then run for president. Now this is an area up here, like I said earlier, that will vote for him. So to campaign here really does not do any good because you can talk all day long and the people will not listen to you because they've already decided they don't care, they have it in their minds, and they will vote for him. Not only that, but they will vote Democrat. They will never vote Republican. They've always voted Democrat, always will vote Democrat. So you have to go against Dick Gebhardt as a Democrat, and you have to do it in the primary. Now, there was a little thing in the press the last week um, about a fax that she sent me. Maybe you saw it. Some of the Republicans thought that was cute. Well, what I want to say to my friends in the Republican Party is eat your heart out. I get faxes from Barbara Streisand. They get faxes from Rush Limbaugh and Pat Robertson. A lawyer by training, like many other politicians, Dick Gephardt was first elected to the U.S. Congress in 1976 and has been undefeated ever since. At the onset, it did not seem likely that this race would pose a challenge. In the past, he had raised two to three million dollars in each campaign and this was going to be no different. So why is he so invincible? He's done an, an awful lot. You can watch him on television. He's here, he's there. I was born in DeSoto, Missouri. I ran Highway 21 a lot and he d had 21 into a four-lane highway and he's going to continue to make it the rest of the way to DeSoto, Missouri. He's wavered on uh, most major issues throughout his life, uh, abortion, um, uh, tax reform. A more generous uh, interpretation of the events may say that he had a, a sincere, a genuine change of heart. I don't really find that to be the case. I think that as he aspired to the Democratic nomination for president in 1988, he changed his position on abortion. He changed his position on gun control. He changed his position on a, on a variety of issues. Okay, if that's the case, how do you explain this? And Mr. Gebhardt, if he was terrible or bad, would he have been in there for 20 some odd years? People can't be wrong that long. <laughs> he has access to, the, to a national Democratic fundraising base. These national donors are able to give him, you know, $2 million for each election cycle. The second reason is that as the district has changed demographically and as the voting patterns of the district has changed, have changed over the last uh, 10 or 15 years, Gephardt has skillfully been able to take the lead in redistricting every 10 years. Gephardt's original political base is here in the heart of the south side uh, of the city of St. Louis. In the redistricting after the year 2000, after the census came out, Gephardt, whose district used to, the lines used to end here, he took territory, even though his population in his district had been moving this way, he decided to make sure his district went upwards because this swath of people here, there's two types of people. There's African Americans who are disproportionately Democratic, and there's white progressives. Because of the complexity, the sophistication of redistricting software, uh, state legislatures are able to mold their districts to make sure that they are not going to face a strong challenger. I caught up with Dan a week after the barbecue to find out what kind of success he had had. The results, let's just say, were less than optimal. A lot of people I noticed at this barbecue will sit there and they'll bitch to the cows come home and they'll talk about how it's the blacks' fault, the poor guys' fault, the rich guys' fault, some politicians' fault. But then when you ask them to volunteer, maybe put a yard sign in their yard, 
they act like they're doing you a big freaking favor. It's like, pal, you know, contribute a little bit. I'm not asking you for a lot. Can you pass out 10 flyers? <laughs> you're, you have no problem wolfing down my hot dogs, that's for sure. My strategy is, and if I can afford it, I want to get billboards. I want to buy billboards. Um, but I thought about putting something like, do it for the kids, in parentheses, and then buying to. You know, and then I'll say pay for buying tin for Congress. Or I'm just a common man. I like the com or uh, you know, I like the common. I'm a common man. You're a common man. Won't you be a common man too? Or <laughs> Dan heard on the radio that we were going to have a Gephardt sighting in St. Louis, so we rushed to see him in person. He's pretty much been a career politician for the last 26 years. I thought you know I could get some good tips from him. Thank you very much. But I want to congratulate the mayors, the park board members, farmer mayors, and mostly the citizens of this great community for having the generosity and the foresight and the good citizenship to invest in a wonderful facility like this. This center, to me, is a family center. So we finally got to see Dick Kephart in person. This was the man Dan was going to debate against. Gephardt clearly knew how to talk a lot without really saying anything but making people feel good. Looking at the novices who were running in the race, it was getting pretty apparent to me that this was going to be one bloodbath. Already? On the count of three. One, two, three. Yay! Yay! I just want to say thank you for coming. Joe, what's going on, man? Hello, Dan. Hey, how's it going? Fine, and you? Good, good. That book you gave me was really fascinating. <laughs> fascinating, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, I dropped it in a hot tub one time. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> would you like to have, be like in a role of campaign managers? Like, for, do you think that seems like something that would interest you? Yeah. Like with Carvel or like doing campaigns? Mm -hmm. First step is the signs. I think the slogan, buy into buy into. It's, right. di it's different, it's easy. And you might want to use one of these. They don't even put the rates in here. They're probably as an attack billboard. And the attack ones would be totally different. And I could put my little thing on small print, but it'll say something that Gebhardt said, like like Gebhardt sucks. <laughs> uh, radio, internet, billboards, flyers, yard signs, and guest appearances. That's it. That's all I'm gonna be doing for campaign. That's that's enough. As long as we do a lot of it, they say that your treasurer should be. Uh, like in your case, it should be a pro-life Republican woman. <laughs> Where, how do you find that? Just run an ad or something? I don't know. You, we, you have to find like, uh, <laughs> you, you know, it should. They say it should be the opposite of your candidate to try and bring uh, bring other people into the into the campaign. You know? Not a lot of congressmen make a like, like a local quirky documentary and, I th and it's turning out really really good. The footage and the film. Uh -huh. It's about wg &E Radio. I think that'd be a good start to catapult when you talk about getting news coverage. Okay. How, how are we going to raise money? What's your thoughts? What's your budget? What are you going to spend? How are okay we Mike, what I think I need is about 50 grand to do everything I want to do. And that's what the, the obviously that's the Let me change that. You think it's 150,000? Yeah, I'm gonna put a one in front of it. Okay. And that's our goal. Okay. If there's any demons that are gonna come <laughs> to haunt us from your past, like, you know, you. Well, let me tell you something. I have no police record. Right. I've. I'm a single guy, so obviously that date, and you know, I meet mean, women. I haven't met right. this is right, but I've probably in the last two to three years probably slept with 20 different women. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of girls, 
wanted to videotape me, but I said, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> and then I have smoked hemp beef hemp. That's about it. That's the only thing. So all those things. And I, you liked it. Yeah, and I liked it. Yeah. And I inhaled. But all those things I'm not going <laughs> to. I'll tell you when you're fucking up. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll help protect you from yourself. Winning November 5th. Right. Winning November 5th. Right. <laughs> What do I gotta do? And just think of it like that. I'm a grunt. I'm out there I'm in the. I'm out there in the trenches. Right. That's the one way I can approach it. Dan looked far and wide for a suitable treasurer. He finally convinced my girlfriend to sign up. The only problem, she was neither Republican nor pro-life. It's like I just need someone who's appointed or designated as a treasurer. Right. So, Goodness gracious. This looks like really fun lighting. Isn't that crazy though? Don't you think that could be yeah, a little bit more? Yeah, it's pretty crazy, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> Here's some more what stuff. What have I done? I don't know about this. Yeah. Oh my god. I just thought it would be fun. But it doesn't look like it now. <laughs> okay, I got you as a treasure and you signed on. You I, gotta, I didn't have you sign anything official or nothing. Like, I'm going to get a P.O. box with an address. I'm going to call the FEC and ask questions. I'm going to start raising funds to put you, into a bank account that we will both open jointly. Okay. Well, thank you for... Uh, You're welcome. Thank You're you very for... welcome. Do the official handshake. <laughs> You're saying that now. Your finances will be all screwed up. I have a whole new wardrobe. It is getting close to the primaries. While Catherine Enns was still evading my calls and Dick Kephart was nowhere to be seen, I met up with Mike Steger, who was on his campaign trail. Let me describe for you the flavor of representation under Gephardt. The MSD plant here in Lime with burn and poop. There's little kids that live around here every day and breathe this burn and poop every day. When I'm elected, I'm going to have a wash, put it on the top of this tower, a spray, and then I'm going to do something about the tanks so that the little kids don't breathe this burning poop every day. I want to put my office in the building where I used to work at, here are the defense mapping. And if the Air Force will let me, I'll let them open up that building for Boy Scout and Girl Scout camp, the only Boy Scout and Girl Scout camp in South City. Right now, I just gotta get through the primary. And after the primary, things will pick up. Because they don't want funds getting locked in. And there's an insulation board, and you can put it on the windshield of your car. Got a lot of base and a lot of people understand exactly where I'm coming from. When I stop, they come and say, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I am pretty impressed with Mike Steger's determination. But is this an efficient way to reach out to 700,000 people in the district? Michael Bram, on the other hand, was running around the district trying to get endorsements from local um, Democratic wards. I went to their ward meetings where Dick and his representatives did not show up, and you have to show up to get an endorsement, which they did not, and he was endorsed anyway. Uh, that also goes with this area here. Um, on the 15th ward in the city, same thing. Dick and his representatives don't show up, I show up, you have to show up to be considered for an endorsement, he gets endorsed anyway. So not only do we have problems up at the federal level, but we have problems in the local level. I hope that I win. If not, the website stays up. I'm going to keep letting people know, informing them of the truth. It is the day before the primaries. Mike Steger's one-man campaign crew is in full force. Whether it'll be enough to beat Kathy Enns 
is another matter. All I gotta do is beat ends. I think she already gave up. Get, inv get involved with every high-tech project the government's got to bring those projects into the district. That means business, jobs, opportunity. P.S. Gephardt, you are fired. Didn't you see that already? Okay. They burn the poop 24 hours a day. And them little kids have to breathe burning poop. My Teamster Union dad went to his grave knowing that Gephardt tried to screw me. This is a blood feud. A buck for the board and however much for the paint. My South County Journal thing, I said, I want to be a representative, not a dictator. Yeah, well, and they quoted that. That's good. And I said, hey, I'm against dogs and dead people voting. We're going to merge the voter database in city and county with the driver's license. You know what Mayor Daly says, vote early, vote often. <laughs> <laughs> Driving a boat board through mulch. It is mulch. Fifty feet. The primaries ended with no upsets. As expected, Mike Bram had lost to Dick Gephardt. All right, we got to put him back. You, you tear pet his head. All right, say bye bye. Bye bye. Camp campaign ended raw. Very nice. Um, Twenty-six and a half percent of the vote received over sixteen thousand votes. Um, that's more than the 13,000 that the uh, Republican candidate, um, Catherine Enns, who received 13,000, will face Dick Gephardt in the uh, general election. But, of course, you know, we have the media bias again five days after the election, and there's a picture of Dick Gebhardt getting free press on the front page. Also in the paper, if you read, it talks that Gebhardt pummeled Mike Bram and ends breeze past uh, computer consult Mike Steger. Um, if you look at the percentages from the state, Catherine Enns did get 58% and Mike Steger got 41%. I don't call that a breeze. And 26% to 73 is not a slaughter. Now the paper also reports that uh, Gebhardt got nearly 80% of the vote. Well, he didn't get 80% of the vote. Now, in St. Louis County, yes, I did get 3,822 votes, which is about 20%. I did pull higher percentages, but the paper does not show that. That was the county. They are giving a perception that that was the total everywhere. Uh, the train that's going by right now is uh, Burlington Northern. It's a track that goes into St. Louis, comes up from Memphis. It'll probably be carrying nuclear waste through here very soon. Uh, Dick Gebhardt shows up in the area, said, oh no, waste is not gonna go through, waste is not gonna go through. 
it's going through. It was started back in 1987. He was House Majority Leader. He could have killed it. He could have killed all the appropriations for Yucca Mountain. He did not do that. The only way for people to take this country back is they have to stand up. They have to say, hey, that's it. And the only way they can do it peacefully is by voting. He has not had somebody run against him in the primary for many, many, many years. So this was very interesting to see that large of a turnout for me when the media won't even put my picture in the paper. Uh, they won't put my picture on TV. And uh, basically nobody knew who I was. So that begs the question, what about the media? Is it not supposed to be fair and balanced, as some would say? Radio plays a greater role than ever. Time on the air is paid for by all parties and distributed evenly among them, giving the party in office no advantage over its opponents. Most of the mainstream media only focus on official sources. Well, who are the official sources? Of course, the Democrats and the Republicans. And they are colluding to keep independent voices like the Green Party out of the electoral process. It is so hard to get information. I just want to know who believes what. What do you think the role of the media is in this whole election process? To sell newspapers and uh, TVs, TV ads. Hello from the anchor desk. <laughs> Good morning again. It's 6.30 now on this Monday, January 3rd, and here's what's happening in the news this morning. This story about two Tennessee boys who need to eat squirrel meat might sound a little nutty, but it is true. Folks all over Morgan County, Tennessee, have been out hunting squirrels today. It's been hard trying to find uh, foods that are high in protein, and we got the idea of squirrel. Journalists can be eyes for the world, often risking their lives. But that's another story. Uh, <laughs> but that's the only... story we want to hear. For who? That's right. We're using all sorts of French. <laughs> but I thought Marie Chevalier might sneak in here, but oh, I said. <laughs> I'm going to sneak off to Jacques Saint Penet. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your tie, Mark? Um, that's Bugs like some, uh, yeah. and Daffy yeah. and Wiley Coyote. This was for sale in the post office. $1.3 trillion. Make this holiday season a time of giving. Come on, join us. If you want to fall out of debt. Nice Friday, nice Friday. Sit Friday, sit. All right, let's go up to Chopper 2 right now. Show you what's happening. Some serious clowning around going on today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they told me where to stand, where to sit, and I'm doing okay this morning. And put it, quote, a cheap publicity stunt, and again, quote, a classic case of media manipulation. Media. Media. Media manipulation. That is the news this morning. Now let's head back to Brian and Jane. This was, this was when we were invading. Um, we were going into Yugoslavia, and I was really upset about some stuff, and I was watching and I was like, watching how they would, like the local newscasters would talk about, you know, they'd briefly introduce a few serious issues with these stern looks on their faces, and then like immediately they'd be, you know, they'd be cutting up and making jokes and stuff. And I was just like, how can anybody take it seriously, the, the, the real news, because there is some substance there, how can they take it seriously if like, these newscasters are just total clowns, you know? When you're, trying to, when you're trying to win your market share by providing entertainment, then you're, you've lost your focus on the news. After dismal response in getting volunteers and raising funds, Dan seemed really frustrated the next time I saw him. No one from the Libertarian Party has called me and said, okay, here, here we're going to help you with fundraising or nothing like that. And I'm not really blaming him, but I was kind of feeling frustrated because I was like, man, am I really to, am I willing to waste all this time and energy? Because really that's all you have. The only independent right now is a guy from Vermont named Bernie Sanders, who's a, a socialist, actually, and Vermont's quite a quirky state politically. I would bet my life savings that uh, Dan Byington um, will not be able to, to win this seat. Why do you vote Democratic? Well, it's a party that my father and mother and sister all vote for, and that's the only way that I can go. Which party do you generally vote for? Republican. It's just, in general, they seem more conservative than uh, uh, 
than the Democrats. Could you define conservative? What are the things that are conservative? All the seen in me. Uh, as a as a labor man and as a working man, I have to vote Democratic. Democrat. Why do you vote Democratic? Because uh, we're a more liberal. What have they specifically done? Uh, I really don't know. I just, where I was brought up to vote Democratic. Republican, the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer, so I want to be You don't have a rich. problem with that. I'm going to be on the rich side. My parents are both Democrats, so I was raised a Democrat. God first, love of country, family, traditional things. The Republicans, the people who have been elected so far, have they kept the promises that you, you've been promised as a voter? Well, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, I support them, and I would, uh, this is my thing, you know? I am starting to get the idea now. The two-party system works something like this. because we will probably never change to proportional representation and we can only elect one person, that indicates that we'll always have two parties coming to the median voter trying to get that median voter. Additionally, they'll be able to raise so much money through their connections in Washington with political action committees, through their connections back home with businesses in the district, and also through the franking privilege, the fact that they can send as much mail as they want as congressmen for free, the barriers, the obstacles are almost insurmountable. We've been certified by the uh, Missouri Secretary of State. The Greens are on the ballot. Uh, we're running, uh, I believe, nine candidates statewide. The Green Party probably would be very aligned with, uh, with my values, but I feel I'd be throwing my vote away. You don't have to have two-party system. To, to run a country, you've got to be able to listen to opposition. And the two-party system is too much intertwined with each other. If you got me a map of the 435 districts, in 400 of the races, 
I would tell you, I could tell you who will win 400 of those with utmost certainty. So much so that I would bet, again, my, my life savings, I would bet my home on it. I think it's the money game. It's a money game. It takes a lot of money to get in politics. And uh, Democrats and Republicans, they got it all. Money is the mother's milk of, of American politics. If you don't have money uh, and you can't raise money, you almost have no shot of getting there. The main reason that it's hard to run as a third party candidate is money, pure and simple. Um, estimates are that my Democratic and Republican opponents in this Senate race here in Missouri will spend five to ten million dollars each on their campaigns. Five to ten million dollars. But without money or the possibility of raising it, it doesn't seem like a possible dream in this society these days. That frightens me. That frightens me a lot. I don't think our forefathers could have ever predicted the strong lobbyists that we have up there who pretty much dictate public policy and tell politicians where to spend their money. And if the politicians don't go with them, fine. You just don't get any campaign contributions. I finally got the message from Republican candidate Ms. N's office that I was afraid of. Yes, this is Carl Hendrickson from Representative Kathy N's uh, candidate for Congress office. He called uh, last week about uh, us participating in a documentary that you're doing. Uh, I've discussed it with the, uh, the staff and with uh, Representative Ant also, and, and we just wouldn't be able to do it at this time. I'm sorry, and we wish you the best of luck with your program. Yes, Mr. Henderson? Hi, this is Shrikan Chalapa. Um, I had uh, uh, been requesting an interview with Ms. Anz, and I think I got a message from you about a couple of weeks back or so. Um, would it be possible for me to kind of just uh, follow her on our campaign trail maybe a couple of days or something between now and November? I mean, if she can't do an online interview, I can at least capture that kind of footage because I'm really trying to capture how the campaigns are run and stuff like that. And it Okay. Um, all right. Um, bye. Editing. Um, editing Radio Free and St. Louis, I am Chuck Norman, which is actually going to be part of my campaign. Hopefully I'll be able to, uh, maybe I might even sell tickets where it ever shows and raise money. No matter how great things are, things may get worse sometimes, but in the long run, life is good. I guess pretty much all the topics I wanted to cover, I have covered, because I mean at this particular point, I'm just continuing to fill out surveys and pass out flyers. And I guess if I can just, if you can kind of help me get spots to speak in front of and right. work with these guys and get a speech, I'll show right. up wherever I can, as long as it's not Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Don't we have a debate? No, the League of Women Voters originally were going to have a debate, and I talked to them, and they said they're not having a debate this year. Oh, so now we don't have a debate. No? Right. no, I hadn't heard that. So I was kind of disappointed about that. Hello, sir. 
Not much. I'm passing out flyers too today. Uh, Dan Bynson for Congress. That's me. Libertarian. Oh, Libertarian. Cool, man. I'm going down to the legalize marijuana for us guys, man. I think marijuana should. I think there should be uh, laws. I, I think the drug laws are not working in this country. The only the only criticism I have about you guys is that you want to privatize the forest. You can't do that. Privatize the what? Forest. National. Oh, the forest. forest. My buddy's uh, uh, running for uh, senator. Uh, you know, Green Party. Yeah. A uh, Romano, Dan Romano. Okay. He's running for that. He's a friend of mine. I'll probably see him today. We're actually going down to a peace protest. So, uh, but anyway, man, it was nice meeting you. What is your name? Uh, Lefty Flower Child. That's my real name. Lefty Flower name. Child? Yeah, right. That's my legal name. I had to change. But... Okay, well, get, hey, give me a call if you, or if you know anyone who's been interested in helping out uh, a third party. Uh, we've sustained a huge loss with the cancellation of the League of Women to Voters debate. That's a huge setback. Um, and what's our symbol? Isn't that a donkey? That's a thing. That's Democrats. No. It's a blunt. It's a donkey. donkey. It's a donkey. It's a donkey. It's a libertarian. I thought or a mule. A, I thought it was a blunt. A blunt. A, blunt. a big old what? spleef. You're saying it's a donkey <laughs> and that's the libertarian? In Missouri it is, yeah. It's a donkey or a mule. So mm -hmm. what are some no. things that are that you guys are doing? Because I have no idea. Is that what you're doing? Tomorrow I'm Saturday? passing out flyers after work. Okay, Saturday? Saturday from 2 to 4 down at the And that's one that's arch. downtown? Mm -hmm. 2 to what? Two to four at the arch. Okay, now, did you want to do a different type of flyer for that? Yeah, I was and do thinking we need, maybe. We need to get that done so I can get it done tomorrow. And uh, the Tivoli, I'm going to premiere the film, which you saw it. It wasn't a completed project, but it will be totally complete. I'm premiering that on October 15th. You don't like the fa the way he portrayed himself in his film. Your one and a half minutes of soundbite from that entire film is pretty hard edge. But, All right, so we're but done it's with that now. done. Right. Yeah. And whatever happens, happens. So I agree with that because we're going to do that. Small <laughs> stuff. <laughs> War based. What do you mean, say? Any, I mean, what's the green something. What's the green He's good. Tell, War bad. I'll tell you what, what's the green I don't know, but I'll Nazi. find out. Okay. We should not exchange an 18 year old's life for an oil price. You know what I mean? I'm not nervous about Iraq lobbing a bomb over, you know, from Iraq. I'm nervous about some terrorists waltzing through the borders. Well, you know, it'll probably happen in two years. Some terrorists just waltzing through the borders, you know, <laughs> with a bomb in a briefcase, <laughs> and he just puts it somewhere and kaboom. Well, let me, That's let the me biggest tell you threat. Something. And our foreign policy should be that where we don't meddle in anybody's business unless Absolutely. they, you know. And that, but, is, that is a large reason why we're hated in a, in a lot of parts of the world. We're, we're everywhere. We're trying to be the world's policemen, and, you know, sometimes we come down on the wrong side. The war drums had started beating out of Washington, and a resolution authorizing war was on the table. Third-party voices were in the forefront opposing war. Why war? Why Iraq? And why now? To the neocons, 9-11 was a godsend. Like a dying vampire, it has been given a transfusion of human blood. <laughs> we don't have to look very far to see the influence of the money power dragging us into war. ExxonMobil, the oil majors, British Petroleum, Halliburton, Dick Cheney's old company, the burgeoning homeland security industry that profits from government efforts to spy on us. The whole military-industrial complex is now becoming the only growth sector in an economy dragged down by war, fear, and crushing taxation. What you can do? Get on the phone tomorrow morning. Call your congressman. Who is the congressional representative from this district? The representative Blaine Gephardt. Mr. Gephardt, who got paid? You've got your work cut out. Yeah. Anybody got a cell phone? Raise your hands. Raise your phone. All right. Here are the numbers. Start dialing. Leave messages. Tell them. Tell them how many people are here. Tell them what kind of rally you've been at. Tell them one fact you brought I today. I call it Kip um, My name is Digger. Uh, also known as Daniel Romano, and I am running as uh, the Green candidate for the U.S. Senate. And the Green, thank you. The Green Party has come out consistently against this war. Oh, George W. Bush should look at himself.
himself. You know, I'm, I hear him talking about, oh, how he's appalled, how Saddam gassed the Kurdish people back in that 1988. Well, George W. Bush, where the hell were you back in 1988, and why weren't you saying anything about it back then? What's the matter? Were you too drunk at the time? I'm Tamara Malay, and I'm the Libertarian candidate for U.S. Senate. Yeah. I'm not going to take much of your time. And I'm not going to ask you for your vote today. I'm here instead to stand in solidarity with all Americans, libertarians, yes, but Greens, Democrats, and Republicans, too, who oppose the terrible prospect of war. Hello, my name is Daniel. My name is Daniel Weinstein. I'm running as a libertarian candidate, uh, candidate for Congress. There's not much that I can add that has not been said today. But when I hear the stories about the veterans who are over in Iraq, stuff that you don't see in the news or the media doesn't cover, the destruction that the Persian Gulf War has left behind, where all we seem to be driven towards is the only solution for our, the Middle East crisis is war, it bothers me. I'm going to have to go apply a little uh, suntan lotion to my forehead. Uh, my hair's kind of thinning out. I've got a good suntan, but <laughs> anyway. Um. He needs to practice. I think he wasn't prepared and he was nervous. That's what I think. But it was his first time out and now he's, he's got experience under his belt. And I think like when I said the joke about the suntan or whatever, I don't know what I was thinking, but that's what I was thinking really because it was like, man, my head was starting to really burn up because some of those people like talked and talked and talked. And um, I was just nervous as shit. And I, and I know that I have to have something prepared now when I go in there. The war resolution passed overwhelmingly in the Congress, with the House approving it 296 to 133 and the Senate 77 to 23. This past uh, Saturday, I went and talked in front of a peace group, uh -huh. and I just didn't feel as if uh, I was prepared enough. And why, why do you feel you're qualified for this office? I'm not a lawyer. I mean, I'm actually a, a Missourian. I, I live in Missouri, and I, and I think that pe the people of Missouri deserve a candidate who really doesn't want to be a career politician. Well, my name is Carl Schlanger, and for the campaign for Dan Byington, I'm just trying to help out with uh, the words uh, when it comes to perhaps doing commercials, uh, helping him with speeches. While Dan was having a tough time finding places to speak, the third-party candidates in the tightly contested Missouri Senate race hit limelight for once. What I am saying is that these elections matter. It's bigger than us up here. I mean, there are, there are people in this state, tens of thousands of them, seniors, I've met them in the 30 senior centers and independent living centers I went to, who need prescription drug coverage. Oh, I remember the first Gulf War. We were told about what, oh, the third biggest army in the world and what a threat he was, and it turned out to be a second-rate army. Thomas Jefferson specifically wrote some of the most important documents. I think we all probably have a, f a fond place in our heart for them, except maybe John Ashcroft. Um, <laughs> getting the job done, that's what it's about, sir, in the, in the United States Senate. The Green Party is not taking away votes from any other party because no other party owns those votes. The voters own those votes. I would not doubt your patriotism, nor would I doubt the patriotism of any member of the United States Senate, Republican or Democrat, and I don't want you to doubt mine again. Actually, I'm very pleased to say that the media have done a great job um, reporting on my positions when they have talked about me. Um, I've noticed no inaccuracies. Once the media gives us a little bit of attention and lets, lets the public know what we stand for, it seems like we get a lot more that people are really very interested in our message. I've been asked, you know, people, um, why are you running with the, uh, for, under, for the Senate, U.S. Senate, as a third party candidate? Don't you know that this is a two party system? My reply to that is, that's right, it's a two party system and we need a second party. I am getting involved in politics is because there's two things I think we really need to address as Americans. And that's one, our health care system, and two, taxes. I think our health care system, I mean, looking out here, I guess by show of hands, do any of you remember doctors making house calls? Okay, what happened, what happened then? Well, I'm, I'm quite 
I'm quite positive you could call the IRS with one question, and if you talk to four different people, you get four different answers. So in reality, what you need to do, we need to reform the tax process, and people need to at least say this. I don't, not, not, not a lot of politicians even mention this stuff. I'll be over here. The elections are drawing near, and Dan's campaign had little momentum. All bets are on his big movie premiere. Fundraise, fundraise, fundraise. We're going against Gephardt. Who knows how much money he has? Let's just say a lot. And how much money does Dan have? None. So in order to uh, win, you need money. Hey, what's Content thanks? of character. Yeah. Character, you know, character is a lot, and you have that, Dan. Oh, thank you. And I'm not just trying to boost you up. It's true. You have character. You're going to win. Hey, well, thank you. Dan, I appreciate it. I wish you were in my district, Cheney. I'm going to work for you anyway. I don't have to vote for you to campaign for you. There Dan, you go. I called to tell you I need 10 tickets on reserve. Okay. If you would like to see the W. Genuine documentary, uh, the first show is basically sold out. We're at the Tivoli Theater today, beautiful Tivoli Theater, trying to uh, organize our first fundraiser where Dan will show his film, the uh, Chuck Norman documentary, which has come off fabulously. What if you only sell 120? Well, then I'll pretty much lose about $1,500 off the whole thing. So that means my work is a cutout for me. Right. Right. And uh, I've and got to, I've got to start selling tickets, and I've only got, got two weeks. Period. Right? I got two weeks to do it. The thing, Dan can contribute as much money as he wants to his own campaign. The film premiere is his film. Right. It's not necessarily a fundraiser, so whatever money he makes from that doesn't have to be counted. We're gonna need people to staff but, a booth. I mean, you want to set a table up and sell buttons and stickers, or you want to give yeah, it away? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So who's who's gonna do that? I've got people who can do that. I'll, I'll, Pretty girls are good for that. Okay. You know, not the shootest. Okay. <laughs> I'm not getting anybody home. I got one person, Gloria Parker. She said she'll put a yard sign in her yard. I, I think what it is is a lot of people, you know, they think, why bother? I don't have a chance. I have no chance to win this election. You know, I'm just pretty much like, I have absolutely zip chance of winning. The only way, the only way I'll win this election is if Gebhardt and Kathy Ends kicks the bucket. <laughs> Like, and I'm the only one on the ballot somehow, you know. But even then, I mean, last time they voted a dead guy. <laughs> I got to go get my flyers out of the car, too. Yeah. You don't mind passing them around here? No, I don't mind. Actually. You paid me for 10. I just want to make sure everything's yeah, right. 99 of them. Okay. So you owe me 50 bucks. Yeah, I owe you 50. Hey Gary, what's up? This is Dan. Um, I need to give you. I need you to give me a call ASAP. I'm driving around and Gebhardt has yard signs, and so does Kathy Ends all over the place, and I have none. Um, I need you to get me that design. You're supposed to email it to me, and I need to get these things up ASAP. And there's my tickets. Okay, good enough. Well, thanks, Gloria. Okay, Thank okay. you, and I look forward to seeing you okay, at the premiere. Okay, That's gonna okay. be fun. Okay. All right. And you don't have to inform me of anything. Just put it. And I know you've been here. To fight with a thousand guys like you, I could win a campaign. <laughs> Not much. What are you up to, man? Our rainbow festivals. Yeah. Uh, libertarians from all over the country come there. They're cool as can be. They got tents. They're sitting there. They'll be smoking with us. They'll do everything, man. But when they start talking about privatizing the parks, everybody gets cool. Are, are you right-handed? Yeah. Okay. Try to get in touch with the other side of your brain over here, your right mind. It lets you be a people-like person, you know? Yeah, that's pretty good. I think I'm going to start trying to do stuff like Check it out. brush my it. teeth left-handed. You'll see after a while. You'll start looking at things different. Why are you supporting Carnahan when Digger is running for Carnahan for Senate uh, Digger's the one that scared me. I was with Digger at my house, and Digger let me off, and I go, uh, he goes, he goes, you know, Carnahan's running. He goes, he goes, I don't think she's going to make it. She's got a weak campaign going on. I go, really? I go, darn it. I got scared. And I left him, and about four or five days later, I came out with my sign. So you would rather vote for Digger than her, but you're voting for her. Well, no, you no, Digger doesn't do. stand a chance. He knows it. Everybody knows it. This is my mother-in-law, Olga. Oh, Olga nice to meet you. I'm a strong Dan politician. Dan, yeah. <laughs> Dan is, Dan's running against, um, well, he's in the... Uh, Democrat? No, 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 no. He's not a Democrat. 
As a matter of fact, they're making. Oh, I don't know. I love him. <laughs> oh, give me some papers on you. <laughs> no, I'm young, papers young, young. Young. Yeah, I'll do with no, don't give her no, any papers. No, She'll turn you in. No, she's I'll a Democrat. Why do you love her, though? I'm, I'm why? A because she's a Democrat. Democrat. Well, but why are you a Democrat? Because my mother was. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and um, the only Republican I did vote for was Eisenhower. <laughs> and you know why? He came to Massachusetts. I was working at the bank that day, and he waved to me. So I waved back, and I Dan voted. waved to Hi, how are you, sir? Jack Fire? Yes. Hey, how's it going, Jack Fire? Uh, I'm running for Congress. Oh, OK. <laughs> I figured, why not? <laughs> Why not? Huh? That's a good idea. Put those with it. All right, I will. That's good thinking. <laughs> Here you go. It's a haunted house. Two dollars off. And also, I'm running for Congress. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> it was so random. It's like here's a haunted house, and I'm running for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> what a novel idea. See, people are re aren't receptive to taking a political. Flyer, but when you combine it with a free ticket to a haunted house, they take it all day long. Oh, I can see the great uh, opening of the WGNU movie. That doesn't do you justice. No. You look younger. You look younger oh, in person. Oh, yeah. Hey, cool, the yard sign. Look at these yard signs, Joe. Wow, those are great, man. <laughs> all 300 of them. Those are both right there. Yeah. When I hit play, it should jump right to. Uh, it should jump right to the uh, beginning of the film. Yeah. production values and was very entertaining. I loved it. I, I loved it. This was the best film I've seen in 25 years. Patton was the last one. Chuck, good seeing you. I'm glad you're happening, uh, Dan. Thank you. You did a great job on that thing. I can't give you enough praise. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I think a lot of people uh, like the movie. They liked the movie, but it's just it didn't go well as far as because it really put me in the hole. I didn't really raise any money for to put towards my campaign. So total to pull the whole thing off was about twenty four hundred dollars. I think with pre sold tickets, tickets at the door, and everything, um, I may have sold around eighteen hundred dollars worth of tickets. So I actually figured I lost about six hundred bucks. I had like one volunteer for the volunteer sign. I had like eight people sign up for yard signs, or what, six or seven? And then I had like 40 people sign up for DVD and VHS sales. I called all the local media, but none of them even returned my calls or anything like that. So, you know, I, they're more interested in covering murders, drug arrests, um, crap like that. So how are your, your speaking uh, opportunities coming along? Well, I, um, I uh, registered to speak at a community college. They returned my check. Oh, your speeches are getting canceled, too. So where do you go from here? Well, I'm just going to put up as many yard signs as I can. And I think what it is is when people go into the polls, it's like they just look at a name they recognize. So. Um, have you heard of Mr. Dan Byington? No. Uh, it's the Gephardt race. Uh, probably Republican. Have you heard of Mr. Dan Byington? No. Hi. Hi, oh, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to run for Congress. You're selling that house? What? You're selling that house? 
I'm trying to, I'm running for Congress. I will be pumped into 318,000 homes, of which probably 10 people will watch this because <laughs> it's on local access. This is my entree into the media exposure since third parties get literally no coverage by the press. How's it sound? Pretty good? Sounds good. I mean, yeah. is it a good 30 second bite, sound yeah. bite? Yeah, just, uh... just smile and be more relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're just going don't, through just it. Don't be too harsh. Yeah. Okay. My name. My name is Daniel Byington. <laughs> my name is Daniel Byington. My name is Daniel Byington, and I am running for the third district, and I am running for the U.S. House of Representatives, and I am running for the office of U.S. of House of. Re my name is Daniel Byington, and I and I'm, and. La, 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 la. If you believe the individual should have the right and responsibility to run their own life, then vote for me on November 5th, Daniel Byington. This year, I don't think it's going to happen, but I do think Dan Byington can and will happen. It may not be Dan Byington, by the way. It may be another person doing the same thing he's doing now, but we have to have people like Dan start this process. That sign might get like six votes just by being there for a, a week or two. <laughs> Uh, we're protesting illegal immigration. Okay, how does it affect you and the ordinary citizens of this country? Well, it keeps wages lower, takes uh, people's jobs, uh, it increases crime, the security of the nation. So here I am, an immigrant, filming a group opposing immigration. I know Dan was running out of places to speak, but this? Well, here we don't need it anymore. We've got 300 million people here. Yeah, you, uh, you want me to just go ahead and start? Hey, folks, I think the third are... nation is controlled by a single party, which has disguised itself under two parties, under the same, uh, under two umbrellas named the Democrat and Republican Party. For example, I believe that with, in regards to our foreign policy, we should remove all of our troops from overseas, stop meddling in people's business, put our troops on our borders, and make it clear and simple. You fuck, excuse me, you, you attack us, we will annihilate you and kick the UN out. This is the only way out of the tyranny of the one party system with Democrats as the heads and Republicans as the tails. Mr. Byington has enough guts and courage to come out here uh, with odds against him that are insurmountable and he's willing to, to, to make a point. Mr. Gephardt, I had the audacity, even though he represents a working class district, that he should be more cognizant of their problems, that it's a lot of his voters that are suffering, to offer a blanket um, amnesty for all illegals in the United States. There's millions of them. And he's, a, he's in favor of high taxes, bringing in more, immig bringing in more immigrants, getting, diluting the white population of, of this, of, of, of the third district. Pam Buchanan put it better than anyone else. If the Democrats submitted a bill to burn down the Capitol building, the Republicans would offer an alternative amendment to phase it in over three years. I'm going to walk into uh, Dick Gephardt's office or see if, if, just see if I can get some information. I just want to see if they're, they're having actually having a debate that maybe I didn't know about. Yeah, 201. In a way, I feel kind of off the hook, though, because being a, a congressman, it almost feels like I'm going up against a Goliath, where when, I'm walk, when I was walking up the steps, I'm thinking it shouldn't be that way. Have you heard of Mr. Dan Byington? Dan Byington? Yeah. Byington? I think he was a, uh, I think he was a uh, fighter pilot during World War II, wasn't he? See, what do you think of this sign? Oh, him? He's alright, he's alright. Just gotta get out and get some work in, dude. Who, Byington? Byington. Have you heard of Byington yet? I heard of Byington a few times. I see you signing up on Chippewa up there. What do you think of Byington? He's alright. It's Byington, Dick Gebhardt, and Kathy Enns in the race. Uh, uh, Kathy who? Enns? Yeah. Enns, right, right, right. You gotta learn how to do this. Good you want to get a campaign going? Get out on the corner. 
little beep beep there? Yeah. That's what that's about. He came by and read beep beep. He does that. The other Democrats come by, they see it, they beep. The Republicans see it, they're quiet and go by. Everybody so I don't have a, I need to get a beep beep on my sign. You've got to cheat every little way you can. Like that. For sure. You could. Look, so these people you, are honking. Do is now, how do you know if these people are honking at my signs or your signs? All you want to do is get recognized, <laughs> don't you? Well, I think, I think that's what it's about. You know what they're honking at? They're honking because they had a, almost a war for a year now. Yeah. They had all that shit. They just want to have some fun. So anyway, man, it was good seeing you again. Uh, hey, yeah. hey, thanks, man. Yeah. I think that guy beeped at me because he was looking right at my sign when he beeped. Maybe, dude. I don't know. That gentleman killed of you in Germany. For, I'm actually running for Congress. My name is Dan Byington. And on what ticket? The Libertarian ticket. Sorry. What? Good, good, good luck. Libertarian. You that. So you're going to vote for me for uh, Congress in 3rd District? Yeah, me and uh, Janet. Yeah. All right, Mike. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I'd like to see you. You know, you know Gebhardt's going to beat ends by 10% or whatever. He was at the opening of the swimming pool, you know, shaking hands, getting photographed, 100 people carefully let in, you know. It's silly, you know. They got this uh, five-story tall water slide. You know, you can see it from Kansas City. Uh, they, they had a, uh, to, to get this uh, swimming pool aquatic center, they had a bond issue and they fell short. So then they passed a tax increase, sales tax increase. And uh, back, at least at the time of the sales tax increase, they knew they were going broke. And they could have scaled back on the swimming pool. But no, you know, government wants to be everything to everybody. It is two days before the election. I never saw Dick get part again. Meanwhile, Dan's only hope is to get more than 0.7% that the last Libertarian candidate got. I'm getting ready to go. I'm going to go into uh, Gebhardt's campaign headquarters here, and I want to just ask volunteers who volunteer for the Democratic Party, why do they volunteer for the Democratic Party? Why are they um, volunteers? So I'm going to go in here and see what... Uh, Hello. What can we help you with? Right now I'm standing outside of, uh, I guess it's uh, Richard Gebhardt, my congressman, is uh, campaign headquarters. Since I've had such a difficult time finding volunteers for my campaign, I was kind of curious to know, why do people volunteer for a particular campaign and how come they do, how come they don't, whatever. And that was something we wanted to ask and uh, nobody wanted to go on camera and they kind of kicked us out of the office. Have you heard of Mr. Dan Byington? Sure. I don't believe in his agenda, and, uh, and I won't support him. Dang it! I gotta fix. I gotta perfect that a little bit. I put. I hit it too hard, and the staples keep popping out. I, I, my favorite sign up there is uh, Gephard. Gephard hasn't done dick for me or the third district, so. I'll give you four. I'll give you this many. That's fine. But when you approach somebody, if you hand it to them and they read it, they can just read it, and then after they read the information, just take it back. Right. And then you can just do that, and that way you can get more, you can get more people than just 10. Probably get 100 at the polling booth. That's really the name of the game, man. Just getting your signs out there, getting it where people see your name. Suppose this is the night before a national election. Suppose you sat in this room and saw and heard this. I 
I've got a list of the St. Louis County, St. Louis City uh, voting polls. And I'm just going to go and put these signs up there. Especially campaign manager. Uh, he's in Vegas right now. Joe Grasso. So there you have it. Joe Grasso is in Vegas. There were no big speeches, no $150,000, no billboards. This sounded very familiar. Afton Christian Church, 9625 Tesson Ferry Road. This is the Afton Christian Church on Tesson Ferry Road, and I don't see any signs. Sign broke. Goat Hillsboro. Hillsboro, that's like a big thing. Burns Mill, that's all off like 55 Barnhart. Yeah, here's another polling place. Two percent is good. Five percent would be better. It is early morning of the first Tuesday in November. This is an American city, for this is election day. Oh man, thank God it is election day. Have you heard of Dan Byington? No, I haven't. Uh, he's on WGNU. I've heard of the radio station. Have you heard of Dan Byington? Yes, I have seen placards along the roadside. Uh, that's about as far as my knowledge of them goes. I, I can consider myself a libertarian. There's no reason to have a guy in Washington making decisions that I can make and hit a button on my internet and there it is. People would, would raise their children to believe that they're the government, not the guy you elect who's going to go up there and he's going to take all the money from the political action committees and vote that way. Over. Who needs that? Yes. That's baloney. I'm just going to do a lot of waving today, I think, and try to pass out flyers. There's Joe Grasso down there. He's uh, a like campaign manager. <laughs> that way. He caught me cross-dressing. <laughs> I didn't know you were coming. Did I hear, Congressman Byington? Uh, 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 uh. They forced me into wearing the sandwich board, see? They've got my hey, children kidnapped, going? see? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I voted for you, though. Uh, yeah. Just, just How can you supporting Gephardt and Byington at the same time? Oh, I'm not. You're not? No. Okay, maybe my English is wrong. <laughs> they gave him a see? free sandwich to wear that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And there was something going on with, you know, my, my, my political hopeful. You know, I'd be out there, and I will be out there today. But this is, I'm helping a neighbor. He had a problem filling this slot. Um, have you heard of Mr. Dan Byington? Is he related to Spring Byington? No. The actress? No, I don't know him. <laughs> Peace, liberty, and justice. Yes. <laughs> Peace, liberty. <laughs> third district, I'm actually running against Kathy Enzo oh, to get by. Yeah, libertarian. Third so. so you're libertarian. <laughs> I'm libertarian. Well, I like it. Congress. It's, my, it's me. I'm running for Congress. And if, right, if, putting out that one, if it's putting out that one extra sign, that will help. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Kathy, I'm a little. I'm financing my own campaign. I just got tired of. Uh, oh, well, thank you. We come to the victory parties. You wanna go to? You wanna go to Get Parts, Carnahan's, or Clara Castles, or Sam Rawls? I got my own party to go to. Oh, do you really? It's not probably. It'll be a victory party down at the Cleats Landing. Okay. <laughs> That's it, my last flyer, I'm done.
<laughs> I am today. I am now. I'm 100 percent vegetarian right now. I don't know who you. If I got one percent, that's point thirty percent better than the last candidate to run in that district. Uh, probably not until nine. I know that probably both of our statewide candidates, myself and Arnold Trimbley, are going to get above the 2%, so we're going to be cool for ballot access. Great. We really hope to retain ballot status after this election, and one way to do that is to get 2% in a statewide election. Have you seen your numbers? They won't show the third-party candidates. We know that um, Carnahan and Talent, between them right now, are getting about 99%. So there's this chance that we could still get the 2%. I'm, I'm kind of uh, wary of the, the, the posture that Libertarian and the Greens are in of struggling even for a place on the ballot. How do you feel uh, now that it's almost over? Uh, how do you feel about how you did? I feel really good. We talked about reparations. We talked about so many issues uh, like this genetic and genetic modification of food. So I feel really good about everything we've done, and I think you know no matter what the uh, results are in the. Uh, in the polls, we have a victory tonight. Well, good work, man. How does this make work for you? I am going to get 2%. Fifty-eight percent for the incumbent Democrat. His challenger, Republican Catherine Enns, is polling in forty percent of the vote right now. It looks like forty-two percent reporting in that race. They're voting for a party. If I was Republican, I would be forty-six percent. Instead, I'm a Libertarian. They think I'm a wacko. One percent. Trying to save Social Security. To try to get better jobs and better wages. To try to improve this economy. To try to get fair trade laws instead of unfair trade laws and to try to make this country greater and better than it's ever been. Thank you and God bless all of you. I think what you've seen in this campaign is a, the tremendous influence of special interest money. Uh, we had campaigns where their candidate was uh, backed up by the pharmaceutical companies, by all kinds of special interests. They, they, in some campaigns, were spending $6 million on a House race, and our candidate was uh, hardly able to come up with $2 million. So. Politics is big business, you know, I mean, a guy, just one guy in a truck with 60 signs isn't going to accomplish a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so there was no nail-biting finish, holding your breath for your underdog high school team to come from behind to beat the frontrunner. Dan or Mike may not have been the best candidates in the race. But given the obstacles put forth in the electoral system, the two-party organization, the media, special interest, and the amount of money, it is doubtful that the best candidate will ever be found.